Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 67 of the Tech Educator Podcast. My name is Jeff Bradbury from TeacherCast.net. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great show. We have a, a lot of great hosts today. Today, we are talking all about Evernote. Now, this isn't the first time we've talked about Evernote, so we're going to be really dealing with some of the mobile applications, some of the third-party add-ons, and really, we're going to dive into how can Evernote be used in your classroom. Thank you guys out there so much for joining we are, of course, live here each and every week, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TeacherCast.tv. We love it when you guys join us for the live show and participate in our chat box. You can, of course, check out our website, TechEducatorPodcast.com, where you can check out all of our archives, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and in YouTube, and really be a part of it. You can, of course, check out our broadcasting schedule and see which shows are going to fit you. Thank you out there. So I want to bring on our co-host tonight, Mr. Sam Patterson. Sam, how are things? How are you, Sam? I'm doing great today, Jeff. Beautiful day here in California, and I was just at a school event uh, at a local gym advertising our school, and that's always fun. I saw some pictures of that. You were also at an ed camp. I believe there was a Craig Yen sighting. Is that true? Yes, believe it or not, I got to talk to Craig Yen in person at Ed Camp Los Altos yesterday. True story. How was that? It was very nice. It was a surprise Ed Camp for me. I hadn't been paying attention to, I guess, enough to Twitter and didn't see the announcements until yesterday morning as I was sitting at Starbucks about two miles away from where this Ed Camp was happening. And uh, I got on my bike, I rode over there, and had an Ed Camp morning. It was miraculous. Uh, and that just goes to show everybody, if you are at Starbucks, good chance there's an Ed Camp happening near, near you. Close enough to ride your bike to. Want to bring on our other co-host here from from the, the Chicago area, Jeff Herb. Jeff, how are you today? Doing great, Jeff. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It is so good to see you. How are things? How is Instructional Tech Talk? And I believe you started a new podcast. How is that going? Yes, I did. Uh, Instructional Tech Talk has been doing great. We've had some great articles released over the past couple weeks. Um, and yes, there's been a couple new episodes of the Instructional Tech Talk podcast. But in addition to that, I have started a shorter show, Ed Tech You Should Know. Um, you can find it at etysk.com. And the whole idea behind that show, Jeff, is that it's about five to eight minute long episodes highlighting one tech tool that uh, teachers and educators are finding extremely useful in their classroom. So really excited to be sharing that out. I've gotten a lot of great feedback on it. So and, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And what are some examples of those type of show topics? Uh, we've had some uh, great interviews with ThingLink. The creator of ThingLink uh, was talking about their product and how the new video feature works. We've talked about Remind. Um, I'm blanking as to the other ones we've talked about, which is horrible. Uh, oh, actually, we talked about screen sharing with uh, the Squirrels apps, which is Reflector and uh, those great line of products. So really great tools that a lot of teachers currently use, but a lot more could really start using should they know that they exist. Absolutely. Great to see Instructional Tech Talk up and running. And I uh, want to bring on our other, our next co-host here, Josh. Josh, how are you today? Doing great, Jeff. Thanks for asking. How are things? Things are things are well. Been uh, now three weeks in my new position as a tech integrator, and I've been doing lots of crazy things I didn't think I would be doing, like Google scripting. Nice. And your handle, of course, is is Mr. G Fact of the Day, and I, I'm I'm destined to know what is the fact of the day. What is the fact of the day? Well. Let's see if I can dig one up here. One of the ones I always like to throw out there is um, apples have about the same effect of waking you up in the morning as a cup of coffee. 
So definitely you should have an apple on your desk every day. I think it would help. Nice. Probably an apple and a cup of coffee uh, for those really rough mornings. <laughs> very, very cool. Today we're talking all about Evernote, that great cloud-based storage system that everybody has. And I, usually whenever I do these demonstrations, I find people fall into three categories with Evernote. They love it and they can't talk enough of it. They don't know what it is, but they've heard of it. Or they created an account because somebody told them to and they've never really understood how to use it. So it's just kind of <laughs> sitting there. And just got done over the weekend at the PANJ ESAT 2 conference where we had a chance to talk about Evernote there. And it was amazing because a lot of people were in that third category. The I have an Evernote account, but other than just writing notes and typing some things, I really don't know what I'm doing with this. I really don't know what I'm sure for. Jeff, you have been our resident Evernote expert here. <laughs> Could you give us a little brief demonstration? If I was to ask you, what does Evernote do? How would you answer that? <laughs> I would answer that by saying, how many episodes can I have? This is our third so far on this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Evernote is just such a great tool because we are, you're able to do so much or so little depending on what you want to use Evernote for. Mm -hmm. And I think in the grand scheme of things, I use very few of Evernote's true features in my day-to-day -day life using Evernote. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bradbury, I think you actually have hit the ground running with Evernote and have you know, used a thousand and one of their features more probably regularly than I do. But I have kind of gotten myself into a workflow that really works for me with Evernote. And I'd be happy to take you through that today. Sure, absolutely. Um, why don't you pull up your screen? The question I'm that people ask me is not necessarily what is Evernote or how do I do things with it? But how can it help me in – is that you? How can it help me in my classroom? And I tend to show them how you can use lists and how you can do the little check marks and how you can do your lesson plans and stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll let you take it away here. Let me change the screen a little bit. Um, how can an educator use Evernote? Absolutely. Um, and I think it's a lot of the same things you just mentioned, and we'll take them through uh, all those different things and how they look both – on the Mac version and on the PC version. We have both up and running tonight for you with the uh, wonderful tool Parallels so that I can run Windows as well. Um, this is just, I pulled up the main page of Evernote just so that you can see that as soon as you go to evernote.com, if you do not have an Evernote account, you can click sign up. It asks you for an email address and a password. You click sign up and it, short of maybe a couple other small questions, you have an Evernote account. They're not taking you through the ringer with a bunch of different things to get an account set up for yourself. Um, it's you know really cut and dry, nice and simple, and everything that Evernote puts out works really well together. So you don't have to worry about you know these weird compatibility issues. Um, the sign up is just just a breeze. So definitely Evernote.com. You click sign up. That's the first step. Once you have an account, you're going to make your way over to the down or you're going to download the uh, actual software itself. Um, it automatically did it for me. That's really nice of it, even though I have it. But it gives you the quick step-by-step -step tutorial to get it onto your computer. And once you're there, you're going to find yourself in a place that is just a wonderful place to be. This is the Evernote for Mac desktop version. Um, I'm signed in already, and this is just so that people know uh, Jeff gave me a lot of credit by saying I'm the resident expert. This is a demo account that I use when I'm showing people how to use Evernote. Um, my personal account literally holds so much <laughs> in my life that uh, to be able to cycle through notes and stuff, I would hate for, you know, because I do notes on evaluations and stuff in there. Um, so it, it's a lot of sensitive information. So if as I'm scrolling through here, like, uh, he only has about 10 notes in here. That's why. Um, but it'll absolutely give you a great introduction as to what Evernote can do and how their different apps work together. I've gone into full screen mode, so if you're looking at that, that's why you don't see anything else on my screen. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning, which is a very good place to start. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side here, notebooks. This is where you can develop your hierarchy or your uh, storage schema for Evernote. I'm gone all over the gamut in terms of figuring out what that storage schema looks like for me. I went from having about a hundred notebooks and then I went to having like four notebooks 
and then I started using only tags, and then I started using no tags. And so it's really a trial and error type thing, I would say, to really figure out what organization system works best for you. And I really think that in the classroom, you're going to find that creating a notebook for every subject and course you teach is probably going to be one of your best assets just so that you can keep everything together. And that's not to say that you're not going to ultimately want to create notebooks for um, specific units even, because then you can have uh, all your PDFs and all your handouts and all your articles that you want students to read and all your lesson plans all stored in one spot that you can quickly refer back to. So that's definitely a, a good pointer that as you're initially setting up your Evernote account, you may just kind of want to take a step back and think about all the things that you're going to ultimately want to get organized and then develop a system around that idea that, okay, I teach two junior English classes and one senior English class. I might want to have, you know, just a English 11 and an English 12 notebook, and you're going to store each of those, you know, anything you pull in there into those respective folders. You can kind of think of a notebook as a folder, just so you know. I mean, as you bring things into it, it's essentially saving it into a folder. So, you know, like my Jeff's ITT notebook, that's my username for this Evernote account. Everything is ultimately saved into I, Jeff ITT's notebook, which is the default notebook. Um, and then you can easily go in. Let's say this is the last note I put in here. I want to rearrange that and put that into English 11. There's a little drop down in this note. Just click it, and then it's automatically put into this new notebook over here, English 11. You can see now that's changed to 1, and it's been reclassified. So notebooks are a really great way to be able to keep things organized, and I would recommend trying to figure out what different things you're going to be organizing into and setting up those notebooks in advance. In order to set up a new note in Evernote, uh, where, whether it may be something where you're trying to keep a list of things that you want to utilize in a specific class period. Um, I used to do that when I was teaching in the classroom. I would open up a new note like I just did right here where it says new note in, and it's going to utilize whatever your current active notebook is. And for this uh, situation, my active notebook was my English 11 notebook, which will actually work really well for this demonstration because right now I'm going to show you how to create a list that you can ultimately check off as you work through the list. And I use this all the time when I was creating lesson plans. And as I'm working through the lesson, I'm checking off my boxes so that I know what I've completed and what I still have to do with my class that I'm currently working with. So I'm going to say, let's say this is for, uh, we'll say it's for tomorrow. So 9-22-14, second period English. And let's say we're studying Romeo and Juliet. So that's my header, my title for this note. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just start creating some actionable things. So I know that I'm going to have a bell ringer when the kids are coming in. You can see right here, and it might be a little bit difficult to see because Evernote has the little tiny buttons because they really value your screen real estate. Um, it's a box with a check in it. That's going to create a checkbox, and it's ultimately going to be one of your to-do items. So I'm going to create that. You're going to see that this checkbox appeared. I'm going to type in bell ringer. And I'm going to write capulets. So they're going to write everything that they now know about the capulets. Let's say we're, you know, a couple weeks into our unit on Romeo and Juliet. And this is just a way for them to be pulling out information from our previous readings. By, hint, by hitting enter, Evernote knows that you've created a list and it's going to be kind of like a to-do list. And so it automatically will enter another checkbox for you thinking that you're going to want them as you work down this list. So it's really nice and easy. You don't have to keep clicking that uh, checkbox button. Uh, you can immediately then say, you know, review last night's homework. Great. Hit enter. Then you can say... Uh, practice for performance of meet so this is I mean obviously a very 
vague outline and I would probably if I were sitting here and actually outlining my class period be putting a little bit more detail in there but this is a great tool for me to be able to then go in so let's say this is done I'm ready to go I show up for class tomorrow and I'm like all right let's do this I'm gonna open up my note I have all these things in order I knocked out my bell ringer awesome everyone did it great check it's done you know we're running around the classroom doing all the things and now it's time, reviewed last night's homework, check it, it's done. It's just a nice way as a teacher, as things get kind of crazy through it, especially a 45 minute class period, things can kind of get away from you. And if you know that you wanted to meet with the small groups before they perform their scene to make sure that they're on the same page, it's, you know, it could easily get away from you. So these check boxes are really nice to make sure that you achieve everything you wanted to in your lesson. Ideally then, you've also created a lesson plan that you can then reutilize going forward because one, it's saved in your English 11 notebook and you can tag this Romeo and Juliet. Now in your English 11 notebook, you have something that's tagged Romeo and Juliet and that will be an easy way for you to separate out the different units that you teach with ch within English 11. It also means that you know that you have this kind of timeline of lessons that you don't have to go in and recreate. I can easily go in here and uncheck all these, change the date if I wanted to, and you have a whole other lesson plan that's ready to go for the next time you have to teach this lesson. So it's really a nice way to be able to work through um, lesson planning and keeping your lessons organized so that you ultimately don't have to go through and rewrite all your lessons every time you teach a class. Hey Jeff, could I jump in here and ask a question quick? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So let's say you know these are some awesome features and I can already already see how there might be some benefits to using this maybe over even Google Docs to mm -hmm. lesson plan but let's say I, I do I, I work with teachers and I suggest to them hey you know use this Evernote and they really like some of those features are there some limitations? Let, I know there's like a free and a premium version, and you might be explaining that later, but I know if I got somebody and they're really excited about it, I don't want them to be hit with a limitation right after they get started. Sure, absolutely. Um, the nice thing about Evernote, and I've been on premium for so long, if, some, if this has changed, I would hope someone will correct me, but um, the nice thing, at least when I remember the free versus the premium, is that it really wasn't a limitation of features. It was more so a limitation of upload per month. And I think if someone can help me out with the amount of upload per month on the free account, I think it, at one point was 50 megabytes, but I'm not sure if that still exists. Um, if it is, somebody let me know and you can splice it in later. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that you're going to see, if you're using it like this, where you're just creating lesson plans, not too much, you know, you're not uploading video or something into it you're not going to see much of a disparity between a free account and a premium account. Um, you know, so if you're collaborating with colleagues and you say like, all right, I wrote this awesome lesson plan. I want to share it. You can easily email the note or you can share the note. You can share the URL to the note. There's just, you can share the whole notebook if you want to with colleagues. And I see this happen more and more as um, teachers are coming in, they're gung ho about making sure that they're kind of all on the same page and they're teaching the same thing they'll put all this stuff into Evernote and they'll share their own notebooks and that way everyone gets everyone else's lessons and resources and that's been really cool too. So in terms of a free versus premium, you're only gonna be met by an upload restriction. Um, the premium account also gives you the ability for your notes to be batched to uh, OCR, optical character recognition uh, before other free accounts would be. Um, I can see that when my uh, scanned things go into Evernote, usually they're OCR'd and ready to be searched within minutes uh, on Actually, my free account. Uh, Jeff, that yes. search is a premium feature. The document search, you can search text in Office Docs, PDFs, and other attachments, including pictures and even handwritten notes in premium, but you don't have that same searchability in the non-premium account. Okay. Premium also allows you to work offline, so you can, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can actually create a note that's saved locally and then synced with Evernote when you have Wi-Fi again. Perfect. Thank you for that update. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, one of the features that I will show you how that comes into play. Um, but I would say for things like this where you're actually doing most of your creation in Evernote or if you're using Web Clipper or whatever it may be, 
all of that is still searchable. It's really when you start batching in PDFs that you've scanned, you might run into the point where you're going to need um, the Evernote premium account in order to be as effective. And maybe that's why I've gone from having a ton of notebooks and a ton of tags to almost no notebooks and no tags because Evernote premium does such a great job with uh, OCR and that character recognition. But like I said, so if you are interested in sharing this with another teacher, or maybe you're going to share it with your evaluator, because I know a lot of evaluators like to see uh, lesson plans, you can go right down here to email note that's going to ask me if I want to see my contacts. Of course, no problem. I can just type this. I'm just going to send it to myself. And then you can hit send. And it's sent. So it, it's really easy. It's all done within Evernote. And uh, you can easily share your notes with other people as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, within here, I'll just take you through some of the uh, quick tools that are in here. You can set a reminder. So if you want to make sure that you actually teach this lesson, you could say, I want to do this tomorrow. Remind me that this is the lesson that I'm teaching tomorrow, which is pretty nice. I'm going to get into the annotation tools through Sketch, but um, really powerful stuff right there. And uh, you can also get information about this note, where it was created, all that kind of good stuff uh, right here in the information section. Now, now Jeff, I noticed so on, the, far? on the left side there, it says, Atlas. What does that mean? Atlas, if you may have noticed, when I clicked the I, it showed me my current location. Now, if you go into Atlas, it's going to show all the different areas where, if, where I have created notes. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. Evernote Atlas will show a nice map. It's going to show what I just created right here overlaid with what the note is on top of the map. So my current location is relative to where my notes are being created. And now you might think like, okay, one that's maybe a little creepy. Number two, uh, maybe that's something that I don't think I'd use. It sounds kind of gimmicky. In my other account, you'll see that there is a massive disparity between all of my work notebooks, my school information, the stuff that I create while I'm at work and teaching and uh, my life as an assistant principal. And then there's going to be a whole nother set of things that are created at home where there are water bills and all that kind of stuff that I scan in because I want to have a digital record of that, but there's no way I want to have file fulls, files full of them. Um, so that's why Atlas is really nice. It's a quick way that you can kind of separate your notes based on geographic location. The other nice feature about the geographic location is that if you have calendar items in your uh, calendar, like meetings or classes or whatever it may be, when you create a note, it will automatically populate notes from and then the name of the meeting or name of the uh, calendar item in your calendar. And that's a, a hugely relevant thing for especially me as an administrator as I have about 10 meetings throughout the day and I take notes in each one of them. I don't have to bother with the title of the note because it's going to automatically populate for me. So that's a good demonstration there of Evernote on the desktop. I want to take you through a little bit of Evernote mobile. And I have my iPad here, and Jeff and I do some very similar things here. You can see I have my notes. I have my shortcut. The cool thing about Evernote is that it is absolutely platform agnostic. It doesn't matter if you're on a mobile device, an Android, Apple, iPhone, iPod Touch, any of those things. All of your features are in here, and that's important because a lot of times when a, a software developer creates something for a mobile app, they take away many of the features. So let's just pull up a few things here. I'm going to pull up some notes, and I'm going to create a new note. And one of the things that I use it for, mostly on my iPhone, is recording my lessons. So it's very simple to type in here, and let's try that again. I'm going to hit the plus, and... Notice automatically it says where we're located, and we're just going to type in here um, lesson. And so over here under tap to edit, we are going to click on the microphone icon. And so all of a sudden, your Evernote starts to become a audio recorder. And all you have to do is click done, and there you have your audio settings. If I wanted to, I can add a picture here 
or I could add something and I could use this as a document camera. But let's say that I'm going to take a picture here. And do I want it to use my camera? Sure. So going to take a picture right there with it. And I want to use that. Absolutely good. So now it's using that. You can also use this to scan in business cards. I'm going to hit the plus button here. So now I have some pictures of various objects. And if I wanted to, I can also use this as a reminder. So I'm going to hit save on this. Now, Jeff, I want to show you a little bit about how I use my lessons. I have a notebook here called Rock Pop. But let me see if I can do my search for my notebook. And I'm going to search for... I do a history of rock and roll class and I'm going to do my rock pop lessons. And so I have my day one introduction, which I have a whole bunch of audio files and stuff that we're doing. And then over here, I have all of the lesson plans that I'm going to be using for this specific unit. Now, for this particular thing, I didn't do the check boxes, but I have day one, day two, day three. Everything here is completely up and down. Now, the neat part about Evernote, and maybe you guys can explain this one a little bit better than I can, but when you copy from Evernote into other things, such as your lesson planning, we use a company called OnCourse, or especially into WordPress, the copy paste is so much better than <laughs> copying and pasting into or from a Google Doc. The other nice thing about this is all of the links that we have, everything just copies over and everything shares. It's really, really easy. But the neat part about this is you can do everything that you want to from inside your iPhone, inside your iPad. You can star things if you want. One of the things that I really like about this is just how easy it is to use, how easy it is to upgrade. And so there's a lot of neat features there. Jeff, could you talk a little bit about business card scanning? That's one of those topics that people want to know. We just came back from a conference and people gave me tons of business cards. Sure. What can you show us as far as how to handle business cards? Because I know Evernote has a feature, but also there's, a, there's an, an Evernote app that you can also do a little bit more from that. There is an Evernote app. I'm going to see if I can snag a business card and I'll actually show it in action. Give me one second. Sure. And of course, if you have any questions out there on how to use Evernote or, you know, some of the features out there, we, you know, we do have our chat room open right now and uh, we love to get some questions. I saw one of our users is actually out there doing an Evernote online class right now. I think that's pretty, pretty neat. Um, Sam, while Jeff's getting yeah. that business card ready, you were mentioning that Evernote can be extended through something called If This Then That. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. If This Then That is a platform of recipes that allows you to connect different services. So I'm going to start a screen share here right now. That Here we go. So what we've got here is there's an entire if this then that channel of recipes for Evernote. Now, a, a while ago, I set up m most of the blogs that I want to read. I set them up to grab their RSS feed and send it directly to Evernote using something exactly like this first recipe that they have set up for a new pocket item to Evernote. So when I open my Evernote, not only do I have folders of notes I've created, uh, handwritten notes for my notebooks, things I've scanned in. I also have a whole folder full of blogs I want to read. And it's incredibly convenient. And inside of Evernote, I don't often get distracted by other tabs in my browser, which almost always happens when I'm reading um, blogs. But if you look, you can see that you've got create a link note in Evernote with Feedly save later. So if you're using something like Feedly to read your RSS feeds, you can create that save later list in Evernote. You can go from Instagram to Evernote. Instapaper connects easily with Evernote. Basically, anything that you can have a output to, even the tweets you favorite, you can compile in Evernote. Um, Gmail works with Evernote. I have a folder that's all of my starred emails, so when I can't find something in Gmail, I can go to Evernote and almost always find it there. Here is the one that Jeff was talking about. Add meeting minutes to Evernote when a new event added to the Google Calendar. So when you add an event to your Google Calendar, it'll create that note so you know where you're taking notes for that meeting. Here's one that's nice. iOS reminders to Evernote. Because like you were saying, Jeff, Evernote is device agnostic. 
So if you are working on your phone, Evernote can help you bridge to your other devices. So just because I set a reminder on my phone doesn't mean I'm always going to have my phone with me. But chances are I'm always either going to be on a computer or have one of my I don't know how many devices with me. So Evernote is my way of keeping track of all of that. Um, let's see if there's any other big ones that we've missed here in the if this then that. There are many, many if this then that recipes. And if you are new to if this then that, it is definitely worth your time. You know, one of the ones that I use on here, Sam, is any time that I take a screenshot of my phone, it automatically uploads. And or I any, saw that one. Or any time that I take a picture. Now, you know, pictures are interesting. Dropbox has, you know, automatic up to upload. I use iCloud as well. But some of these, I automatically have my photos put up to, to Evernote. And they're just it's another way to back up all of your systems and stuff. Hey, Jeff, I just noticed at the bottom of the page here where it tells me what page of, of shortcuts I'm on, of recipes for Evernote, do you see that end number? It's 914. There's a lot of recipes for Evernote on here. <laughs> so wait a minute. What is that? If there's peace in the world, then put that into Evernote? Is that what that one was? Yeah, I, I think so. No, I'm pretty sure that's a Craigslist, and it looks like it was set up for a specific price point. So this person is obviously looking for a um, a place in Portland that they can afford, and it sends it to their uh, their Evernote account. I believe later on they have a uh, shortcut that if they see someone who is unkempt, it automatically sends them to their Evernote account also. <laughs> Excellent. You know, I have a business card I can share if you're interested in seeing that portion of it. You know, one of the things that Evernote is really, really good for is these business cards. And I got to tell you, using this Evercard, Evernote business card scanner is pretty cool. Jeff, why don't you give us a little demonstration of how this works? Sure. I'm actually on my iPhone right now. Um, I'm in the Evernote app. And what I'm going to do is tap on camera. And it's going to pull up. I had business cards selected already. You can see that there's multiple options at the bottom, business card, document, picture. Uh, so it's already locate, looking for a card. I'm going to move it over to this business card that I randomly found on my desk. And it's going to try and think. It looks like it's found it. Certainly did. And as you can see right there, it pulled up the company, Villa Medical Arts. It pulled in the phone number, the address. And that's all ready to go. As soon as I hit the check mark, that's a new note. That's now saved in my Evernote right here. And I can call directly from it on my iPhone. So it's created basically, it recognizes that they're phone numbers. It recognizes a fax number. If I really wanted to, I can't imagine my doctor is in on a Sunday. But if I were to press in right here, it's going to call that number. So that's a really cool thing for the uh, business card feature is that it's that easy. It automatically recognizes all the pertinent information and files it for you. Now, when you scroll down on that, it also has a picture of the card, doesn't it? Say that again. I'm sorry. You kind of broke up. When you scroll down, it not only takes the OCR of all that information, but it actually saves a picture of the business card. So that way, just in case there's other things on it that it didn't pick up as actual contact text. See, there's the business card right there. There you go. Yep, and you can add notes right here if you want. You have all the information. You can add an email, whatever it may be. Um, you know, it's really a slick way to be able to take a Rolodex full of, full of business cards and then be able to take that with you on the go. And, you know, the notes section is really, really important there because maybe today you and I have a meeting I can take notes right in there, and I have your contact, your business card, whatever, and then maybe in a month when we have our next meeting, I can just continue all of that. I can then also add the audio because I could have that note open during our meeting, and yep. so I can have one note, which is only my Jeff Herb contacts. A lot of neat stuff that you can, that you can do on all that. Absolutely. And uh, while you're on me, do you want me to talk about Web Clipper? You know – one of the great things that we were talking about with Evernote is the ability for teachers to go out and research their topics, right? You know, we were talking to a teacher earlier. She's like, look, I have a new, new lesson that I'm doing. I'm going online. I'm finding all of these links. In the past, I would actually take the link. I would copy it to myself, 
and then or I would email it to myself. So that way at the end of the day, I'd have all these emails of myself that were just links to different websites. There's two ways of doing that. You can email it to your Evernote account, which Jeff can talk about in a little bit, or you can use Web Clipper. And so let's talk a little bit about what Web Clipper is. And then, Josh, I believe you've got a Google way of doing that, too. Jeff, tell us a little bit about what Web Clipper is. Web Clipper is a really nice add-on for the major browsers that are out there. Um, it's an add-on or extension in Safari, Chrome, Opera, Firefox, all the big ones. Um, and as if you're looking at my screen right now, uh, shameless plug for my website here, I figured this would be a good one to look at because um, there are multiple pictures in line with different text. And I just want to show you what options exist with Evernote Web Clipper because ultimately Web Clipper is a way for you to save content from websites and kind of strip out all the stuff that you won't care about later and just keep all the information that you're interested in remembering and being able to reference in the future. So if you can see here, I'm scrolling through the site. There's um, the articles about different Photoshop alternatives. There's four or five different options. This is something that I'm going to want to refer back to later. I don't really care about taking a screenshot of my whole web page. That's annoying. I don't want to copy and paste because I'm probably going to get some weird stuff that's mixed in here and some unusual uh, formatting. And Jeff, that kind of goes back to your uh, Google Doc versus Evernote copy and pasting. You know, we're copying and pasting from a website as opposed to a document that's been downloaded and saved as an RTF. That's where you're going to see that weird disparity in the uh, formatting as you move that data around. So the nice thing about Web Clipper is that I can go up here to this little elephant, which is the iconic Evernote symbol, click it, and here's this nice little pop-up that comes up. It says, Here's the title of the new note that will be created, the best free Photoshop alternatives. And then it gives me a couple of different options and it's gonna show me as I scroll through these options, what this would ultimately look like. So it's saying, I'm gonna just clip the article and the piece that's popped out is literally just the article. It's stripping out the sidebars, the header, the footer, and it's just taking in the pertinent information. There's an option to do the simplified article where it's going to show you this option, where it strips out all of the website formatting. It'll give you kind of like a Instapaper or read later effect, where it keeps the images in line where they appeared in the website, but it makes it so much cleaner and nicer for you to read as you go forward. You can also tell that this has shown up a highlighter so that you can highlight the article prior to saving it to your Evernote account. You can also save as full page, which will just take a nice image uh, PDF version of the entire web page and save that into Evernote. You could also just do a bookmark or a screenshot of the current page as it exists right there. I typically either go with just the article or the simplified article depending on what it is. Um, I'll go article just for the fun of it and click save. It's going to go into my default notebook and I'll figure out how I want to organize it later. If I want to add a tag, let's call it Photoshop. And then I'm going to add one more tag is the website it came from. So instructional tech. You know, I have a ton of tags from Edudemic and TeacherCast and my paperless classroom, uh, just to name a couple of great ones. You can hit save. It's going to clip. And in just a matter of a few seconds, it's going to sync into your Evernote account where you're going to be able to see that right here. Now, I hope it didn't get screwed up because of the screencasting thing. It kind of looked weird back there. Um, nope, here we go. So right here in my Evernote desktop account, I opened it up, gave me the title, the best free Photoshop alternatives, and you can scroll down and you can see just the column of the article that you wanted to see exactly as it showed up in the web page. Wow. So that's a really nice use of that uh, web clipper. Uh, the other nice thing, if I don't, if you don't mind me taking just one more second, uh, in terms of finding PDFs online, you know, you have to go through the process of downloading the PDF and then figuring out where you're going to store it. If you're using Evernote, it's really quite nice. I was just doing a demo because I was talking about Rem Romeo and Juliet earlier in the lesson plans. Let's say I want to find some lesson plans in a PDF format. So I Googled Romeo and Juliet PDF lesson plans because you can never have too many good ideas on how to teach Romeo and Juliet. Maybe there's something that someone else is doing uh, that you can take and make your own. 
um, to fit your own classroom. So you only have hundreds of years of experience to draw correct. from, right? Yes, you do. And I'm sure I would be naive to say that someone is not doing it better than I would. Uh, this curriculum guide looks pretty good. It's from Simon & Schuster. I'm sure they're ultimately trying to sell me something, but that's okay. I'm sure there's still some good ideas in here. Oh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. Character connections. This might be a cool thing to hang up in my classroom. Same thing exists, guys. Even though it's a PDF, you can go up to the Evernote little elephant here. It recognizes that it's a PDF. I'm going to be able to put that in my English 11 notebook, and I'll be able to add the tag Romeo and Juliet. It's pulling in all of this information from Evernote desktop. It knows I have a Romeo and Juliet tag already existing. I can click on that. It adds it. I'll hit save, and it's going to sync that note. I should have named it. I'm sorry I didn't. But it, uh, I'll show you how you can edit that once we go in here. Here we go. We can move back to Evernote desktop. We'll sync it up with the web version of Evernote. And here we go. You got your PDF all ready to go. Anything you need from right in here. And obviously, since it's saving as a PDF, you can pop that out in your favorite PDF editor. You can print whatever page you want, and you're ready to go with uh, that document that you found. Obviously, you can change the note. I forgot to title it back in the web clipper. So I'll just put curriculum guide Romeo and Juliet. Oh, if I know how to spell Juliet, that would be awesome. And there we have it. So Web Clipper is really powerful. It's a really nice way to be able to save information. Uh, you'll see that right here, it's been clipped. You can share out, link to it, email it, Google+, Twitter, Facebook. You can put it in uh, LinkedIn. You know, really great way to be able to share information. You know, PDFs is really important for us as educators. We sometimes have a lot of documents, and instead of going out to make copies of things and handing out packets, the idea and the ability to take those PDF files and distribute them is really, really important. And, you know, one of the things that got me hooked into Evernote um, is because I was trying to take a number of PDF files and... I, I didn't want to go into WordPress and literally individually link each single one. So what we did was we actually went into our Evernote and I created a, a notebook called Violin, let's just say. And so then I have some violin music here and all of this stuff is PDF files. And instead of individually labeling each one of these in our website in WordPress, I now have a folder and I've shared the folder with my students, and they have the ability to search for and look at all of these things. Now, the question, of course, is can't Google do this? Can't I do this in Google Drive? Why, why is this not easily – why shouldn't I be doing this in Google Drive? And the answer I've always come up with here – and, Jeff, I'd love your opinion on this – is Google isn't this visual. You know, Google Drive will look at a folder and a picture and all these different things, and it'll have an icon of what it is, and it'll also have the, the name. But by looking at this, it is a visual – you're seeing the pages of the PDF right in there, and it's so easy to handle with things. I have a folder that I have called, you know, Classroom Handouts. It's got my syllabus and some notes and all those things that in the beginning of the year you're used to downloading, and then the kids don't really care about it. It just kind of ends up on the floor when they leave. Now, everything is in there. Instead of handing them a syllabus or handing them your rules and regulations, we have the link. They always have it. Mom and Dad has it. I can show up on the board. It's on the website. I can do anything that I need to, and I don't have to worry about going to a copy machine and dealing with all of that stuff, which you know the kids aren't going to be reading the syllabus on the next day. You've saved a few trees. So by using this, this idea here of just putting PDFs into a notebook – and and you know you can again the kids can download it the kids can look at it the kids can save it however they want to use um this has been an invaluable part in having me create a paperless classroom absolutely you know i like what you're saying about the differences between evernote and google um i am a major google proponent i mm -hmm. use it daily um but i think that in my professional practice, I find it being utilized two different ways. I have Evernote for myself. I keep all of my documents. I have gone almost as paperless as possible utilizing Evernote. I have a scan, uh, it's called ScanSnap, the Fujitsu ScanSnap. Right on my desk, paper comes in, it goes through the scanner, it goes right into Evernote, paper gets recycled. And that's a great system like for me. 
I'd like to dovetail on that if I could, sure. uh, Jeff, because the the mention of ScanSnap there, I uh, let me get over to the right screen here. I'm sharing what I did last year. I, I took the ScanSnap desktop scanner and mm -hmm. I scanned in all of my journals from college. And suddenly wow. I have access to all of this work that has just been living in binders because I can share it over in I can save it into my Evernote and then I can search it so if I did a search for free cake we can see this book titled 50 word poems including free cake part one and two um, I don't necessarily remember what all is in those books but I have <laughs> found it so right. what previously had just languished on the shelf is now accessible and a good scanner can make an amazing difference the uh, thing I've enjoyed most about ScanSnap and working with them is that their scanners do connect to Evernote. So the one I've been looking at this past week is this guy. And this is a mobile wireless scanner. So I can actually scan things directly to my tablet. Sam, I don't mean to interrupt oh, you. Evernote. Your screen isn't sharing. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I just, I'm just, interested to see what you're talking about. It's, you know, we have to let Jeff edit something. <laughs> <laughs> like I was saying, the uh, the one I've been working with this week is this little ScanSnap iX100. Cool. And there is a review of it on MyFavoritListClassroom.com. But what I love about it is the fact that it's battery powered, light enough to fit in my bag, and I can show up to a meeting with a teacher with my tablet and my scanner, and whatever they're working on, I can scan and have access to to refer to while I'm building my lesson plan for their class. It's been really valuable here at the beginning of the year because our class lists keep changing, mm. and usually the teacher has the most current class list, and half the time it's written in pencil. So being able to grab that while I'm working with them really helps me be prepared when I show up so I have 24 iPads and not 23. Yeah, that's really cool. How's the speed on that one? It's uh, it's really fast. It's something nice. like, it's just a few seconds per page. So That's really, great. it just pulls it straight through. It's a, it's a you know, one side scanner, full color, mm -hmm. 300 DPI though, wow. and it'll scan like 260 some pages on a single charge. Excellent. That's really yeah. Great. You'll have to check out the video. It's really sharp. Maybe I'll yeah, drop it in the chat box here. We can also Excellent. put a link to it in our show notes as well. That's a good idea. I know the guy who does the show notes. I've heard, I've heard of this person. You know, last week on the Tech Educator podcast, we talked a lot about Google Chrome extensions. Josh, you've got a few Google Chrome extensions that work with Evernote. Why don't you share with them? Share with us a little bit about those. Sure. You know, I was. You know, I'm not a big Evernote user myself, and I might be now after tonight. I've seen some amazing things that I didn't really know Evernote could do. Um, but I do have one thing that I've seen before, and that I think would be great as a good entry point for people to use in their classrooms. Um, my wife's a special ed teacher, so those accessibility type things are really near and dear to me, and how can we help students, um, especially read online, when, when you look at an article, there's so many things going on. So this tool that I'm going to show is much like the Web Clipper, just a little scaled down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and hopefully this works here. This will be the first time on a Chromebook that I've done this. <laughs> can you see clearly or do we get I black? I can see it clearly. Yes. Perfect. Now All the right. Rain is gone. So this is an extension in Google Chrome. Nice add-on with the rain is gone thing, Sam. Uh, this is an extension, clearly, and it basically just makes things easy to read with the added addition of being able to save them to Evernote. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Uh, but I really, I really like this and I tested it out on a few different sites and it's it's pretty cool. So first of all, I would like to look at this one here. If you haven't, if you teach science or math and you haven't looked at xkcd.com or xkcd what if, you're really missing out. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and clearly this. So this is a decent site, but even this you can use clearly. So I just click on the extension. And what it'll do once it's activated is that it will take a layout and it will actually give you a preview of what it looks like stripping down all the stuff on the outside. That might work better in, uh, in a CNN article or something like that. Right now it appears to be 
not very happy with me at the moment. Once we get it to work here, it'll be good. But it's really nice for those accessibility features uh, that are important in in everybody's classroom, especially you know in our schools we have a lot of uh, the um, least restrictive environment with our special ed populations, and um, this is a great way that helps all students, but um, is is something that is great for that too. And right now it appears to be buggy on me, and I'm not sure why. But it is Maybe good it's... to note there, Josh, that you know if you are in a Chromebook and you're in an environment that may not be able to download Web Clipper, because it's a great app, but it is something that you have to download and install, you can get the same effect using one of these Google Chrome extensions, like clearly. Yep, and now we got it to work, so thank you for that nice segue. <laughs> I just need a little refresh there. So here it is. Here's what the screen looks like. It took this, let me just show you the opposite here. So it took this article from CNN, which isn't horrible, but you still have a lot of fizziness going on. Plus you have the comments at the bottom, which sometimes I like to avoid. And then you click on clearly, everything's stripped away. And you're just left, like Jeff was showing, with just the text from the article with some images. And then on the right side, you can clip it to Evernote. You can do some highlighting. You can actually change the theme. So there's some themes you can have. You can enlarge the text. You can flip them so that the text is white instead of dark. And if you're still a slave to paper, you could print it. Um, but no. it's simple, simple, lightweight. And I, I think it's it's got some great potential. And, and like you said, Jeff, when you have Chromebooks and you don't have the desktop version of Evernote, uh, or if you're at a very locked down school and they're not willing to download that, uh, this is a great option for people. Definitely. That's cool. Nice. You know, we were talking a little bit about PDF files, and everybody wants to take a PDF file and do something different with it. Maybe they want to annotate it. Maybe they want to cut it up a little bit. Jeff, there's something called Skitch out there for Evernote. What is Skitch? Because I have this app on my phone. I have it on my iPad. I don't really know what it's for, but it is pretty important, isn't it? I've heard of this sketch before, and I'd like to show it to you real quick. Sure. Um, let me tr share my screen. I'm going to do this. Brevity is key here because I know that Sam has something he'd like to get to as well that is also really cool. Um, Skitch is another Evernote product. It has become an Evernote product at least. Uh, you can download it for Mac, iOS um, really easily. Just go to evernote.com slash sketch. Um, what it ultimately allows you to do is annotate pretty much anything. So what I'm going to do is use the Clearly page just for fun. I've already downloaded Sketch. It's down here on my toolbar or my dock or whatever it is you want to call this thing anymore. Um, the really cool thing about this is that it has a built-in screen capture right in Sketch that I use constantly. I find this really easy to use. Uh, you can just click Screen Snap. You can draw whatever it is that you want to snap here. So I'm going to draw this web page because it looks like fun. And I'm going to go ahead and capture that. That is now in my sketch, and I can do whatever I want. And because I do a lot of tutorials for teachers and edu educators about different web tools to use, Sketch has become my best friend because there's a lot of these great tools on the left-hand side where I can say, okay, if you want to download Evernote clearly, use this button right? And I've just drawn an arrow that really makes that button stand out. Not that it really didn't before. This was kind of a bad example because the green download button is pretty good. Um, but if you wanted to say, for instance, maybe this was for Web Clipper. Maybe I wanted to clip this web page. You know, maybe you get rid of this and say that's not what we're focusing on. Maybe it's use this button, the elephant button, which isn't as obvious on the page. And you can easily say click this button. right? And then you can even just do one further and do a nice box around it. Of course, I could be changing colors as I go through this. Another really cool feature is let's say there is a link to something up here like Honeywell Access. This is for our card access system. This isn't something that the link would be, you know, unfortunate to read, but this could be an email address or this could be a credit card number or whatever it may be. If you've taken a screenshot and there's something on that page that you don't want to share, this blur option blurs it. 
it's beautiful. It's like the easiest thing. You don't have to figure out how you're going to overlay a text box or put it in paint and then scratch it out with a paintbrush or something like that. It's a blur. It'll take it out. It's really great if you're teaching students or teachers how to log into an account and you want to show that instead of just jeffrey.herb at d300.org, you just put in jeffrey.herb and all that good stuff, but you don't want that finding its way through the internet. You can blur out pertinent parts of your email address or um, you know, home address or whatever it may be and easily share information that way. So the blur tool is really cool. I use it all the time. You have different color options, which is nice. And then ultimately, you can then save this right back. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. This gets saved directly back into Evernote. You can also save it into email, messages, Twitter. I mean, not save it, but you can share it out using all of these different options as well. So uh, it's a really cool app. You can use it for a thousand and one different things, but it ultimately always finds its way back into Evernote. And I can go back in here. It's syncing right now. Evernote has already realized that there's something new, and that's starting to sync. And in my Evernote desktop, the thing that I created that has the arrow, the thing, the box around the uh, Evernote button, the blocked out internet link, and it says click this button to use Web Clipper, has been saved in my Evernote desktop account just as I left it in Sketch. This works exactly the same way in iOS or uh, on the Mac version. The other cool thing, you may notice some of these tools look pretty similar up here. Evernote has built this same kind of functionality directly into Evernote as well. You do have a little bit more uh, functionality as you're using Sketch because it can do screen snaps and that kind of stuff. But all these tools look just like they do in Sketch, and you can continue making edits directly in this note, and it'll save an update. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool indeed. One of the neat so. features about Evernote is that it allows third-party products third-party apps to really really sync with it and do some amazing things we've already on the show tonight talked a little bit about scan snap and how you can have a scanner go directly not into your computer but directly into your evernote account sam you've been working with something else called live scribe haven't you <laughs> sam i can't hear you sam we're going to edit this out let me try this one more time Sam, talk to us a little bit about LiveScribe. Sure. LiveScribe is a pen that uses real ink and paper. Don't tell my blog audience. And what it does is this pen transmits via Bluetooth to my tablet and allows me to upload what I've done to the tablet. So once we get it into the actual app, it looks like this. So like many here, I've actually annotated this picture using Sketch, right? That may look very familiar to you. And it is also one of my favorite annotation tools. We need your screen. Um, so so what this is showing us is that when I click the share button, I have the option to mail it, print it, or open it in Evernote. Almost all of the apps that allow me to send a PDF out of my device allow me to open it in Evernote. So that is one of my favorite features of Evernote is I can send just about anything that's on my device to it. While I occasionally do rail against PDFs because I like to post things in a way that is visible online, what I end up doing sometimes is taking a picture of the PDF and having the picture hotlink to the actual, um, to the Evernote document where that PDF is stored. When I originally uploaded that PDF, that uh, information from LiveScribe, what it looked like was this. Although that looks very dark, so hopefully, there we go, you can see my screen. Um, so this is just what that handwritten note looks like. Now some people may say, wow, I don't need super high-tech tools to allow me to capture my really bad handwriting in a way that's infinitely shareable. But for some reason, that's something I really enjoy doing. Yeah, I have a LiveScribe pen as well, and I can vouch for the fact that it is a tremendous productivity tool. Um, I've found that meetings just seem to go better, especially when there's a few people where people don't have computers out and there's no distraction. 
we've kind of taken on that precedence as an administrative team just because we want to be as productive as possible. That also kills my productivity because I love taking digital notes. So right. this, the LiveScribe pen has saved me because I can walk in with my LiveScribe pen and my uh, LiveScribe notebook, take notes as I'm going, and then that, bam, that's instantly in my Evernote, and it doesn't require me to sit there and you know go through and chronicleize all the notes that I took in that meeting I had just been in. So it's really a, really a great thing. Yeah, and I've actually got two versions of the pen. One of them is a version that uses Wi-Fi and uploads directly to Evernote, mm -hmm. so I can capture the um, I can capture the audio there. This version, the one I use more often, it's a little slimmer but all of the recording takes place inside of my phone. So I open the Evernote document on my phone and it connects via Bluetooth to that. Now, I hear that our friend Peggy has a question, so I wanna get over there and get her question. The Echo is not wireless capable. Um, so I'm using the Wi-Fi, which is the one that connects to the Evernote directly, but mostly I use this LiveScribe 3. Very recently, LiveScribe changed the way that the Echo works. So it used to have a website where you could upload things to their website and it would host the audio embedded PDF that was the recording there. And now that is not an option. Now there is just a desktop portal. Um, I imagine you're probably able to upload it manually to Evernote, but I haven't looked into that that much because that's a change that Evernote, that uh, LiveScribe only recently made. Sam, is all that stuff done through software updates inside the pen? How does all that work? Well, for the Bluetooth pen, uh, the, software the software update actually goes to my tablet, and then it gets transferred over to the pen via Bluetooth connection to the tablet or the phone. So for the Wi-Fi pen, it is a download that it does, and that's one of the main issues that some of the users of the Wi-Fi pen have had is you'll go to use it and you'll turn it on and it'll say updating and you essentially just have to wait. So the the first version you showed that's actually an iTunes app update, right? So that you have to update your app on your iPad. Um, there is an app that has to be updated and then the, up, the app checks for firmware updates for the pen. So there's two okay. different levels of update. And there's another question here on the chat from a WA hyphen KA. He wants to know if the pen is for both left handed and right handed people. Yes, it is for left handed and right handed people. Although he sorry, may I'm find sorry, Sam. that people who uh, can't look at their hands have a difficult time using the pen. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. A um, couple of other things that we want to talk a little bit about here with Evernote. Here's one of the favorite ways that I like to use it, and that's simply collecting things and collecting websites. We talked a little bit about Web Clipper, but there are a lot of third-party apps. Here's one that happens to be called Zeit, and it's just one of these apps that you know curates a whole bunch of articles. Let's say that I'm searching through here and I like this article here. I can do a couple things with it as I go. I can, of course, share this out to Twitter. I can share this out to email. But what I like to do is I like to actually save everything to Evernote. So that way, all of these great articles that I'm finding online go directly into my Evernote. I can put tags on them. And of course, as you've seen before, it pulls up all of our tags. It pulls up all of my notebook things. And if I wanted to, of course, I can, I can make a new tag or a new notebook here. But just the idea that I can send this article very easily into Evernote has been a lifesaver for me. Because, you know, because these articles are found in another app, the idea of a web clipper doesn't exist. Um, so to have apps like this where you can bring in some great content and then export it out to Evernote is pretty, pretty invaluable. I, I know Zite is leaving us soon. I'm not sure if there's a, a good one. I don't, you know, I, I use Flipboard from time to time. But these are really, really neat little features if you can save it out to Facebook, Twitter, and then also export it out to uh, your Evernote account. Feedly. Feedly. Feedly's good, too. Feedly's Feedly. awesome. Guys, you know, in the last hour plus here, we've gone a lot through Evernote here, and it's amazing. You know, we've done three shows on Evernote, yet we keep coming up with new ways to use it and new questions to be asked. 
if there are other questions that you have about Evernote, we certainly want to hear from it. You can, of course, reach out to me here at TeacherCast. You can find us at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. A lot of these shows that we're doing come because you leave us a message on our voicemail hotline at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. And, of course, the show is going to be archived on TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. If you have any feedback or anything about our shows, check us out. Send us an email feedback at teachercast.net um all of our show notes of course are going to be up on on uh, techeducatorpodcast.com this is of course episode number 67 josh did you learn anything tonight i learned a ton and i and i really do honestly think i i'm going to start using this i liked that business card feature and as i start to get to more conferences here in the future and hopefully isti this summer that mm-hmm. sounds like it's going to be really useful and just that way to collect things from online. I mean, I have so many bookmarks, it's not even useful. But if I could visually see those sites in a place like Evernote, that would make a world of difference. So, I, yeah, I learned a ton. Thank you guys very much. So we've talked about what is Evernote. We've gone into how to do lesson plans. We've talked about how to collect stuff for your lesson plans using Web Clipper or even Chromebook extensions like Feedly. We've talked about how to take pictures and business cards and all of that stuff. We've talked about third-party apps like ScanSnap and LiveScribe. We've talked about the mobile versions. We've talked about Mac versus Windows versus iPad versus all of these different things. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. There's tons of links on TeacherCast. There's tons of links over on Instructional Tech Talk. And we will do our best. Sam, maybe you can send me the video and I can add it to the end of this edit here. But we will definitely get a chance to. you got to check out the demonstration that Sam did on that ScanSnap scanner. Um, really, really professional stuff done, Sam, by the way. Um, where can we find out more information about the other stuff happening over on My Paperless Classroom? Microphone. Sam, take it away. <laughs> if you go to mypaperlessclassroom.com, you can find out about all the amazing things happening on My Paperless Classroom. Excellent. Jeff, Instructional Tech Talk, give us some plugs here. Yep, you can find all the great content at instructionaltechtalk.com. Uh, I looked like a fool earlier and did not remember the last few episodes of my new show. We talk about Google Classroom. We talk about device mirroring, uh, a cool student portfolio tool using Bulb, and then, of course, ThingLink uh, are a couple of back episodes of EdTech you should know. So instructionaltechtalk.com. Nice. And, of course, check out everything that we have going on at TeacherCast. What we're actually doing here is going through a new series called Google Drive in Under 5. Uh, it's been very, very popular. We're getting a lot of hits with it, essentially, as, as, as you know, small, quick, everything you want to know about Google in under five minutes. Really, really neat series here. Lots of stuff going on. So check us out, My Paperless Classroom, Instructional Tech Talk. Josh, what was your website one more time? Mr. D, Mr. G Tech Chats at dot blogspot dot com. Excellent. And don't feel embarrassed any day of the week. You can find Josh and say, dude, what is your Mr. G fact of the day? Absolutely. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sam. Josh won't toot his own horn here, but he just had a blog published on Vicki Davis's blog, Cool Cat Teacher. Really? Very cool. Yes, he did. He was guest blogging for her, which is pretty cool. That is pretty neat. Uh, how how is Waka? I heard he's trying to guest blog, but he's having some uh, some 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 difficulties. Oh, Jeff, you don't even know. It's horrible. I've I've looked all over the Baker space. The kids, the kids, they had my arm on Friday. <laughs> what do you mean they had your arm on Friday? Well, they wanted to make a movie, and they're like, "Hey, look, here's an orange arm." And Sam was like, "Hey, guys, that's Waka's arm." Wait a you minute. So what you were and saying said, is okay. So, so in other words, there was a bunch of students that you were lending a hand to? Yes, that's probably the best way to put it, oh. but I don't know where my hand is now. Oh, my goodness. So you can't it's, even give us a round of applause? I, I, I couldn't before. I only had one hand, so I can't even wave goodbye, Jeff. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I, pre- I thought you'd be crueler about this. No. I appreciate your compassion. <laughs> no, no, I couldn't be crueler about this. I don't have that many bad jokes. No comment. Excellent. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, I'm, I'm trying to come up with some kind of arm and hammer joke, but I, I don't have one right now. You'll anyway. edit it in later, I'm sure. 
Yes, I will certainly edit in later. You'll see it on the subtitles underneath of here. Thank you guys so much. Next week, we have a great show out there. Of course, we're going to be live on TeacherCast.tv at 7 o'clock. Next week is going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to this one. We are doing PowerPoint versus Keynote versus Google Slides versus maybe something else. And we're going to be showcasing how to create slides, how to add music to slides, how to add movies to slides. And we've got a list of things that we're going to insert into slides, and we're going to show you how to do them in PowerPoint, in Keynote, in Google Slides, and really in a few other things that we have out here. So thank you guys out there. Walk away. Wave goodbye. Never yeah. mind. Thank you guys out there so much. On behalf of everybody on the TeacherCast Network, see you next week. Enjoy the week, folks.